Good, Good afternoon! Hello. <laughs> okay, well, one personal way. All right. The way this works, we say good afternoon, then you say good afternoon. Now, we'll give you another chance if you didn't know that. Right. <laughs> so, first us, then you. Ready? Set. Right. 
rascals, Mont Creep and his son Paul. Listen closely to me and obey, or I shall throw you out into the street to fend for yourself. And I promised him, but you see how I keep my word. I promised my father the same. Stay far away from Capital and that daughter of his. What can I do? The greater the obstacle, the sweeter the reward. I often saw you out of my window. And I saw you through mine. And then one day... I was sitting here reading. While I was gathering flowers on my side, and a gust of wind blew my scarf over the wall. And I picked up the scarf, not knowing where it came from. And I climbed the wall to find it. As I climbed the wall to find out where it came from. Paul. Sylvia. Since we love one another, we must be married. I, Paul, last of the Moncriefs, do solemnly pledge myself to you, Sylvia. Last of the Kaplans. What noble recklessness. Our love shall be known through the ages. Two children of two hard-hearted fathers. But who knows? Perhaps their hearts may soften. I doubt it. I have heard of stranger things. Perhaps... What? Perhaps President McKinley would come riding past one day. I run to him and tell him the story of our love and of our father's hatred. He asks to see our fathers. He tells them that their attitude is scandalous and un-American. Our fathers make up. Your father gives me your hand. I don't think so. What then, if you should fall very ill, and Doc Prentice declares, this boy cannot live, I don't know what's wrong with him. I must have Sylvia, or I shall surely perish. Your father begs mine to let us marry before you die. I don't think I like that possibility. All right. What if Banker Drysdale falls in love with me and asks me to marry him? And you say, no, no, a thousand times no. <laughs> He is offended and sends three or four men at night to abduct me while I'm here in the garden. I scream! I lose not a second of bounding over the wall and fight them off like a tiger. You lay two of them low. My father rushes in and takes me in his arms. I tell him who I am. His heart softens and he gives me to you. My father consents because he's proud of my bravery. Then we live together for years and years. Happy and content. How romantic! What an adventure! This is not at all impossible, is it? Someone's coming. This evening. Eight o'clock? As usual, you will come. No. Yes. Your father. Aha! I thought I might find you out here again. I love this spot in the park. Well, I see nothing lovable about it. What is charming, this old wall and its ivies. Come down from there, you silly boy. Ah, now I see why you're talking such gibberish. You've been reading those plays again. That's what filled you with those foolish notions about charming walls and ivy. A wall isn't beautiful, it's, it's useful. I'm going to have all this greenery ripped off and this old wall torn down. But, Father... I want a white wall and a high one to keep the neighbors looking over into our park. All along the top of it, I'll sprinkle broken glass. No! What? I said, oh, oh, pity. <laughs> broken glass all along the top. Now, I have something to say to you. Yes, sir? My boy, I should like to see you married. Oh! Oh! I have given the matter much thought and have chosen a white wing. <gasps> I tell you, I'm in earnest. I intend to force you if I have to. The girl is a jewel, and she's rich. I want none of your jewels, father. Villain! No, no, no. I swear by this wall, which hears me, I hope, that my marriage shall be more romantic than any dreamed. Rascal, I'll beat you if I must. I can understand why Papa hates that mean old man. Oh, uh, there you are, daughter. What are you doing out here? Nothing. Nothing could change my mind. Insolent son. I forbade you to come near this wall. You see that park over there that belongs to my mortal enemy? Oh, I know, Papa. Here you are, close to that rascal. Then, good for nothing of his, of his neighbor. And, and, and I'm going to extend the wall up and put an iron wheel all along the top of it. He never will. It'll cost too much. Now, go inside. But I... Now, go quickly. Chew. And I understand that you no longer respect your father. No, sir. You no longer care about him. No, sir. I don't know this. Never mind. mind. We'll talk about it later. Do you think you could possibly be a good son for a moment? Yes, sir. Take this note into town and give it to a man called Strapper Run. You'll find him at the hotel. Yes, sir. About this marriage. It's Never mind. We'll talk about it later. Now go. Bob Grief, I hear you over there. Kaplan, you old scoundrel. How are you? Oh, this cold still troubles me. And your gout? Oh, better. Well, the marriage is arranged. At last, bravo. Now we'll be able to tear down the wall. And live together. By joining our properties. All this by marrying our children. But I wonder if they would have been so anxious to marry if they knew that was what we wanted. I know, I know. A marriage arranged beforehand is not so attractive to 
children of Israel back in Gazawas. <laughs> Your plan was brilliant. Well, yes, the moment I got the idea to pretend that we hated each other, I knew they would want to be together. <laughs> and you got <laughs> it. Uh, now all we have to do is say yes. But how could that be done? Remember, I called you a scoundrel, a fool, an idiot. An idiot? A scoundrel would have been enough. So, sorry, dear friend. I guess I got caught up in the part. So what do we do now? Your daughter has given me the next part of our plan. Uh, the children are meeting here tonight at 8. A few minutes past that hour, men in black show up to abduct Sylvia. Abduct Sylvia? Hey. They emerge from the shadows. She screams! Paul leaps over the wall and fights them off. The men flee. I arrive on the scene, and then you, you bless the couple and shed a few tears. My heart softens. Kurt. It's a stroke of genius! I quite agree with you. But where do we find such bits? Well, I have arranged that also. We shall hire an actor. An actor? You know the sort of people they are. You think that sort of person can be trusted? Well, judge for yourself. Here's our man now. Mr. Strapperell, allow me to introduce you to my good friend and neighbor, Mr. Kaplan. It is an honor, sir, to meet such a distinguished member of the community. Does my plan meet with your approval? It does, sir, it does. It is quite simple, but yet I see some magnificent moments for me. Where's the rest of your bed? I regret to inform you that the rest of my company has not yet arrived in your charming town. What? It seems that there has been some difficulty for them in booking passage on the railroad. I am certain they should be here in a day or three. Can we wait that long? Well, definitely not. It must be tonight. I could do my best to fight them alone. I am quite the match for any man on stage. But it needs to be a band of men. Paul must feel as though he's vanquished a great many foes. And I'm sure Sylvia would be upset if she were abducted by only one person. You don't possess a local group of thespians, do you? Good heavens, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Of course, that's it. How silly of me not to think of it. What? Perhaps I could impose upon you two fine gentlemen to assist me. Uh, us? Act? <laughs> I could instruct you in the basics of the scene. I knew you would have no problem in pulling it off. Excuse us, sir. We could give it a try, but it's for our children. But it would save on expenses. Oh, very well. You have the rest of your men, sir. Splendid. How much is it going to cost? Well, that depends on what sort of abduction you wish. You mean a different kind? Oh, yes, indeed. There's the ordinary daytime abduction with two men. Sounds ordinary. There's the midnight abduction. If you don't have a full moon, it looks very shy. Shy. But there's the pompous abduction in wigs with brigands and muskets. Oh, no firearms. I don't want anyone hurt. Especially us. Of course, there is one more type, <coughs> but it is rather grand and could be expensive. Expensive? What kind is that? A first class abduction. Abduction by moonlight. It's quite the rage. Well... A picture it, sir. Moonlight, the lovers meeting in secret in their yard. <laughs> Say yes, both by so they think. Then suddenly, men jump out of the bushes. One has a torch. It's a wonderful lighting effect. The music starts to play from somewhere. Another man appears. He's tall, dark, and incredibly handsome. He suits up the young lady and plans to steal away into the night with her. Yes! The young man, bound over the wall to save her, he is met by those two men in black. They form a barrier to his beloved. He must fight them. <laughs> the left and the right. They fall to the ground beaten. His prize is easily within his reach. The girl is put down, and it is now time for the combat to death. Yes. The two battle there in the moonlight. It seems that the abductor is about to finish off the young fool, and suddenly he gathers up all his strength and builds the culprit. The death blow. I stumble. I fall. I stagger. I die. <laughs> it's most impressive. <laughs> I think we'll be recognized. Oh, quite the contrary. You'll be wearing masks. He'll never know you. I think we should do everything in the best possible way. No expense spared. One first class with all the extras? That's it. I shall return soon and instruct you on your parts. I need to gather up a few props we're going to need. You must remember, sirs, to leave the gate open to your yard tonight. Oh, it shall be done. Uh, my compliments to you both. You won't regret it. One first class for all the extras. He forgot to tell us how much it's going to cost. Well, it couldn't be that much. After all, we're going to be playing most of the parts. Oh, I suppose you're right. 
Now we'll live together after demolishing the wall. And my widow will have one large home. Our dearest wishes are about to come true. And we'll all grow old together. Dear Kaplan. Dear Bod Cree. <laughs> Your daughter. Dear Sad. What do we do now? You must pretend to fight. Rascal! <laughs> <laughs>
Good heavens! And thus their plan was working well. The lovers were to be married. The fathers tore down their wall. Just take it back their service. Oh, carefully. We will need it later. And I, Streverell, gave one of the greatest performances of my career! <laughs> Now the next day. Pretend, if you will, that it is late afternoon. Let the play continue. This grass is going to need attention to grow. As soon as this bare spot has grown, our yards will be the most beautiful in town. I love green. So much prettier than all those bright colors in Captain's yard. Oh, neighbor, how are you? Well, no need to ask, we see each other all the time now. Oh, yes, how silly of me. <laughs> Who do you have there? What does it look like? They're flowers. I'm going to plant them in this bare spot. Something to brighten our yards. It needs color. Oh. Green is so tacky. It'll do your yard good. My yard doesn't need it. Our yard does. Must you do that? What? That infernal noise. I'm trying to think, and I can't with all that awful noise you're making. It's getting on my nerves. Neighbor, you do get on my nerves sometimes, but I don't complain. I get on your nerves? Yes. You tell the same story 20 times a day. What? Well, at meals, you roll your bread in the most disgusting manner. Whatever you sit, you jiggle your leg constantly. You're always worrying about money. Yes, that means you're ridiculous. And you are I wait. Wait, I... What are we doing? We never acted like this before. Before it was easier living next to you. The wall helped. Yes, you're right. With the wall, we were happy. But we didn't tear it down for ourselves. No, no, we didn't. It was for our children. Yes. We must suffer in silence, then. Sacrifice is the lot of parents. Ah, don't shh. They're coming. They always come back to this. I love you. I love you. You were so brave. Oh, it was nothing. Tell me again, how many were there that you bought for me? There must have been ten. Ten? <laughs> I thought sure there were at least twenty. Oh, there were at least twenty, not counting their big leader. Or thirty. There must have been thirty. Possibly. Tell me again how you did it. Well, it was quite fortunate that all forty of them were standing in a row. I hit the first one, and all fifty of them fell like dominoes. <laughs> you were so brave. Well. I love you. I love you. <laughs> See how well your plan has succeeded? My children are quite bad now, thanks to you. Well, your daughter with her famous abduction is most aggravating. I have to hear that story over and over. Your son thinks he's a hero He gets on my nerves. Well, the worst part about it is that they we think we are two idiotic fools that they have deceived. I don't like it at all. You should have thought of that before you came up with this brilliant idea. I'm going to tell them the truth. No, no, don't do that. At least not until after they're married. Oh, very well. Good day, Papa. Ah. Good day, father-in-law to be. Oh, good day, daughter-in-law to be. My, my, what a bad mood you're in. Well, it's your father's fault. My, I am Please, here. don't quarrel. Of course, I understand that it's not easy for you to behave like old friends, since you're not. And you like to quarrel a little still in a friendly way. Yes, friendly. And I think of what you used to say about Papa. I would sit by the wall and hear every word. What did you think? You never once suspected that I was meeting Paul. Really? And do you think if now, I... Now, now. I know that lover's dreams are always realized and that fathers always end by falling into each other's arms. It's always like that in the romances. Oh, let me laugh. I can say something. What? Nothing? Stop. Nothing. Well, if you have nothing to say, then why not keep still? Oh, keep still? Nothing to say? Do you imagine that all of this just... Happened? How do you think that people get into this park through heavy locked iron gates? By free. Do you imagine that young ladies are carried off nowadays for free? What are you saying? It's high time you knew the truth. The truth? Do you think that either one of you would have fallen in love if you'd been told to? No. Perhaps you suspected. I heard every meeting. But the abduction last night was bought and paid for by us. No. Well, here's the bill. See 
for yourself. Go. <laughs> to act for real, confidential, to bring about a marriage, one abduction, setting and scenery, costumes, torches, and one expertly performed death scene. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should not angry. Angry? Of course not. It's a charming idea. Are you going to tell Paul? Oh, no. Men are so stupid. He would never understand. Let me show you my friends. Of course. <laughs> well, very well, then. Let's go see to the wedding arrangement. Yes. You don't blame me. Not in the least.